um, welcome today. So we might might as well kick off straight away just because it is quite a bit to pack into one hour. Um, but thank you for attending. I'm Renee Dombowski from Business Station. And today we're going to talk about unpacking Facebook analytics, also known as Facebook Insights. Um, throughout today's session, I'd really love it if um, you guys were happy to have a look in the back end of your own pages so that we can have a look at what's going on what the analytics are showing us and how we might be able to improve that performance for you. So are you guys both happy to share that today? Yep. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. Um, feel free to interject and ask questions as we go through. I'm happy to ask answer questions because um, your questions are most likely the same sort of questions that other people in the webinar today will be looking to have answered and anyone who's looking to also watch this later on because it is recorded and, and um, the link will be shared to anyone who registered. Okay, with that, let's get started. So hopefully my, uh, so obviously today you guys are here because you've um, registered for the Digital, Digital Solutions Program. Um, this program has been around for a little while but has recently changed from to a different delivery model. So three hours of one-on-one -on -one support and four hours of workshop and webinar um, training. So how have you guys found it so far? Yeah, I've only had one good. hour so yep. far. Um, I thought it was four hours actually, but, um, and then, but when do we book the other ones or do they get in touch with us, Renee? Yeah, so what will happen is you have your first one-on-one -on -one appointment and we figure out what your objectives are. Yeah. From then, we can actually allocate you to different specialists. So um, you might be looking for to improve your SEO. So then we might allocate you to Nikki Jurd for the next one-on-one. -on -one. And then we'll also decide which workshops might be best for you. So you'll have your first one-on-one -on -one, and then you'll have a one-on-one -on -one halfway through at the three-month mark and then your final one-on-one. -on -one. And between there, you'll attend four hours of workshop or webinar support. Right. Yeah. So this will be one hour, obviously. And then you've got um, other webinars that are an hour long, but we've also got some face-to-face -face workshops, which are usually two hours or online workshops, which are also two hours. Cool. Yeah. So there is a library of workshops available on the website as well. So if you wanted to have a look through there and um, let us know if there's anything that you really want to attend, we can get you enrolled in that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so would I be able to just get a brief introduction to you guys? So who are you in 30 seconds? What platforms you're on? So you, your business name, where you're located, what platforms you're on, and what your experience level is with those platforms. Um, did you want to start, Courtney? Yeah, sure. So my name's Courtney. Um, I'm in Perth, Western Australia. Um, my business name is Studio Blinks. I'm a graphic designer. Um, and... So like, as well as my own business, I have like a lot of clients, I guess. So through those, I will use like Facebook and Instagram, um, TikTok, like Pinterest, LinkedIn, so like whatever the client wants pretty much, um, often creating like content for those platforms. Um, so I have a, like a good experience with them, I guess. But I think some of the just analytics and like especially ads and stuff that I've run before have been a bit like confusing or there's a bit of analytics that like don't add up and stuff that I was like hmm, I should learn some more about this <laughs> yeah they can be a bit funny as well and mm. I actually find that analytics can be quite glitchy so I don't know if you've mm. ever noticed that it's often down yeah um, but we will actually take obviously with only an hour we can't spend a lot of time in each section so it's more of a higher level overview but mm -hmm. um, if you decide during a one-on-one -on -one that you do want to go into more detail in any of those areas we can mm -hmm. um, but also we will look in the ad platform and how you can customize those that analytical data as well mm, cool awesome. yeah thank you right. and Pamela um, my name's Pamela Milliken I'm a mastermind next level coach I have a um, personal development um, business and um, I'm a, also a published author and my book Making Broken Beautiful has been adapted to a, a screenplay and my six-week program is called Reset Your Life and it's all based around the same sort of thing of not letting your past determine your future and and that and I have started using Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn but I'm like a fish climbing a tree on all of them <laughs> so <laughs> I'm hopeless I don't like it I hate social media 
Um, yeah. that's not, I'm, I was great before COVID because I was able to go out and when I talk to people, people can sense my authenticity and that, you know, and I'm very passionate about what I do and I get very good results very quickly. But online's a different beast, so I've had to restructure how I do everything and I've been having, having several people help me with that. But the people I'm working with at the moment, they don't seem to get much engagement on the post that they're putting up for me. So I thought, well, if I learn a little bit more about it, then I won't be such a fish climbing a tree. And then I can maybe uh, provide a bit more info for them. Yeah. Provide- mm. It is difficult um, to get that engagement. Um, have you got any paid advertising? So do you, with your strategy? I did, I did do that once. I, I went through Fiverr and I got a lady who was actually a French lady who was really, really very good. But I paid for two weeks and it was $50 a day and it was going into the third week and I thought this is costing me an arm and a leg and I still wasn't getting any calls from that or any anything from it. And I know it's a long game, but $50 a day was kind of crippling me a little bit. So I had to yeah. pull back on that and then try and get some more. You know, I'm not very good, uh, Renee, with the whole organic thing, going into a group. It feels really contrived to go, oh, hey, Renee, I saw you on a webinar today and it looks like we have similar interests. When I know I'm only go in and have that conversation because I want to make friends with you so you'll maybe buy my course or introduce it to someone who will yeah. and it just just doesn't sit with me so I'm kind yeah. of caught in a rock and a hard place really. Yeah I completely understand it it might be worth um, having a look at the so I think it's next week I'll have to have a look at the dates there's and um, making sure that your ad accounts are set up correctly for a start most yeah. people aren't and then also I'll be doing some in-depth workshops, so two-hour workshops about um, your brand awareness ads, actual um, conversion ads, so converting sales, and maybe for you, lead generation ads would be one of the better ones. That's one of my favourites for my business. Yeah. Where um, you're collecting people's email addresses and phone numbers because they do want to know more about your product. Yeah. Uh, you've got a website, have you? I do, yes. Yeah. So um, have you got a pixel installed on your website, a Facebook pixel for retargeting? Do you know? No, I'm not sure, actually. I'm yep. working with a developer. And it's a, I've actually been through, um, without like taking everybody's time, but I, I, I've spent probably about $35,000 on using the wrong people at the moment. And I'm on my fourth web developer who's, my, and my website got hacked and then it was just, it was a downhill spiral from there. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the pixel thing. I could ask him. So do what do I ask for a Facebook pixel? Is that what I ask? Yeah, Facebook pixel. I might actually, so both Courtney and yourself, Courtney, um, you know, you, I'll, I'll put it out there for you as well. I think probably what does happen often is a lot of small businesses, they skip that real sort of grassroots stuff that we need to do, like the setup and making sure pixels are installed so we're tracking our customers or people who have already shown an interest in our business so that we can retarget them. And we can also collect an audience of people who look like those people to retarget. Um, and I think that maybe it sounds like that step's being skipped. So when you are doing your advertising, it's difficult to get those sales or conversions because you're just not reaching that audience that you need to. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, so I'm going to send through some info for you, some workshop info. And if you do want to register, just let us know and I'll get you registered. I will. I'll register for that. Anything that can help I'm keen to do. Excuse me. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Courtney, do you mind if I ask you, are you doing any paid ads? Yeah, um, I haven't done any for myself, but um, a few clients that um, I'm kind of like in-house for, I guess, um, have asked for them that we run them for, but it was kind of like trial and error, like we didn't really know what we were doing. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I think I'll send you the same info. Do you want that as well? Just to have yeah, a little sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. That sounds really good. Um, I think that really will help. But anyway, let's get stuck into the analytics side of things. So what is Facebook analytics? So basically it gives organizations a better understanding of who engages with their brand and how they engage with their brand. We can collect all sorts of information, which can really help us. um, I find when it's just looking at the page level data, not the ad data or our group analytical data, It helps us just to develop our buyer personas better. So who are our customers? How old are they? Where are they located? Gender and more. Um, So that doesn't, that just helps us when we start trying to do our targeted ads. So it's a really good idea to have a look in there and get a feel for who's engaging, who's not engaging and who our main audience group is. Because sometimes we think it's 
an audience group. So, for example, um, I worked with a construction, a civil construction training organisation, and they thought that their customer was uh, men. So once we actually really, and, and, their, and their posts weren't really getting the engagement that they needed, they ran competitions, they wanted to give away Bunnings vouchers. And I said, look, I just don't think that Bunnings vouchers are the right type of giveaway for this competition. Um, really, I think we need to target the wives of the men who are doing the civil construction training because those guys are probably not really sitting on Facebook engaging with content. Um, and so by simply doing a double pass to the movies, we got a much better um, buy-in for the competitions because we were targeting the right people. So um, that's where until you actually look at the analytical data and who's engaging, you won't know that. You're just assuming you know who your customer is. And while your customer is, let's say, the, the male, civil construction, tiler, pipe layer, they might be your actual customer. To get to that customer, you need to go through the wife who's seeing your content on Facebook. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where can you find the analytics? Facebook has, and this goes with everything with Facebook, and it's getting more and more complicated. There are so many different ways that we can access the same data, which can make it a little bit confusing. So um, we can access analytical data through the business page insight, so your actual physical Facebook business page. That's probably my favorite place to have a look at the page level data and post level data because it gives us a few really cool little um, bits of information like competitors or pages to watch um, and also this, the amount of negative engagement or feedback we've had on a post. So we'll go into that. Um, you, in there you do have your generic insights such as overview followers, you can watch your competitors. Um, you can also extract raw data so you might find that the analytical data, especially you, Courtney, if you're reporting analytics back to your clients, yeah, you might find that the sort of overview they're providing just isn't quite enough information mm. because um, as an agency myself, I um, would take on a new client and let's say I've been doing their social media for a month. It might be that I've taken over the social media in March, but the last agency finished in December. December might typically be a really great month because of it's Christmas, people are making lots of purchases, there's a lot of activity going on on socials over that time. So their insights might look incredible. So I don't really want to compare March to December. Mm -hmm. I need to compare apples to apples. So when you extract raw data, you're able to extract data going back indefinitely. So I can compare January or March this year to January, March three years ago. Mm -hmm. So we can really see truly the movement and how it's improved or decreased and maybe look at what has caused that. Um, so you can also have a look at event level data as well. Then you've got business suite. So I'm sure you both have had some sort of interaction with business suite. Yeah. Um, so could you explain those things in a minute, um, Renee, yeah. when you finish explaining this? Because I do have that and I, I'm like, again, I'm rubbish with it. So I'd love for you to give a bit more insight on that. Yeah, I'll actually go into that now. And this is something okay. that we'll go into a lot of detail with when we do the business manager, are you set up correctly, that workshop. But basically business suite is very similar to another Facebook software, which is called Creator Studio. So they both are plat uh, areas or dashboards where you can create posts, post them live, schedule content, you can engage with your um, community, so respond to inbox messages. You can um, cross-post to Instagram. So they're very both very similar. However, um, Creator Studio lends itself a little bit more towards video creation. Mm -hmm. um, business Suite, yeah, so think of it as a central dashboard for your pages and your Instagram and your um, inbox messages and stuff like that. So we'll have a look at that as well and where to find the analytical data with regards to your business suite. If you've got multiple pages that you manage in business suite, you can look at the analytical data for all of those pages put together. So you can look at your business suite as a whole, or you can really drill down into individual page level data. 
So as I just said, Creator Studio is also like a dashboard, very similar to Business Suite. A lot of people don't even know about Creator Studio. Um, I would definitely recommend having a look at it. I personally prefer Creator Studio over Business Suite. Um, okay, so then you've also got your closed group insights. So if you manage any closed groups for the purpose of your business, you can actually go in and have a look at, you know, who who is what members are in there, male or female, who are the most active or engaged members, who contribute the most. So there's some really interesting data in there as well. Then you've also got your ad, ads. So any ads that you run, you can have a look at the analytical data, which relates specifically to those ads. So we're going to go in and take a look at each of those. So let's go and have a look at our actual business page insights. Do I have a volunteer from you guys? Anyone? Okay. I'll go. <laughs> yep, no worries. And we can yeah. switch between each thing. That's fine. So down the bottom of your Zoom screen, there's something called, oops, I'm going to stop my share. Okay, so stop mine. And just want to make sure you've got permission to share. Yep, cool. So there's a green share button down the bottom of the Zoom screen. Uh, okay, I've just got chat, raise hand and Q&A. Me too. Oh, do you? wonder what? Maybe they've done something with the... the... We're not allowed to do it, Courtney. She's telling us fibs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see what we can do. So who can share? All panellists can share, right? So you're an attendee, that's why. Yeah. Um, yep, I'm going to promote you both to a panellist, which means that you can both now share. Can you have a look at that? Yep, joined. Great, thank you. Okay, so now you'll have a green share button down the bottom. Yep. There you go. If you can now share your screen. Okay, cool. And I've got to find my... I've got you on Google Calendar at the moment. You share my Google Calendar. Let me just like, get that out of the way and bring up Facebook. There it is. Oh, my goodness. See, this is <laughs> a little bit stuck, so bear with me, guys. That's okay. That's okay. Desktop. How do I find it? So I've got... I'm sharing you right now, Renee. <laughs> so. Here we go. It's starting to share. That's great. So in order to go into our Facebook business page insights, we go to our Facebook business page. All right. Uh, is that the business suite thing? No, just go to your actual page itself. Oh, okay. I mean, you yeah. My personal one, this one you mean? No, your, one? your business page. So what's your business page called? Um... I don't know. <laughs> I don't normally. I've been having someone help me with this, so I don't actually know. Um, but what's your business called? Uh, Mastermind Next Level Coaching, but I don't know if I've got a page with that on. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't you think so. You must because otherwise you wouldn't be able to do paid ads. Um, okay. How do I if find you click the flag? Here we go. Off. Down the bottom left, down the bottom left under intro, it says owner and founder at Pemla. So this see, one? no, down, let, down a little bit further. Under oh, intro, yeah. yep, click on oh, that. Link. Reset your life, reset your yep. life coach. Yep, let's have a look at that. And hopefully that's going to take us to your business page. Yep, great, this is it. So this is your business page where business pages are different to personal. Personal is about having friends. Um, you can't advertise through that. If you really want to attract new customers, we really need to be running ads to reach a new audience because Facebook's very difficult to reach a new audience without using that, without running ads. So what we're going to do now is down the left-hand side, you can see insights. Click on that one. Okay. So in our insights, this is where we get an overview and it will take us back to the last 28 days worth of data. If we ever want to extract more data, so let's say three years worth of data, we can go into, there's a little blue hyperlink that says export data. See that? Under page summary. I might um, just drive if that's okay. Yeah, would you? Sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I'm okay. around all over the place. <laughs> that's okay. Excellent. So here we are. So this is the back end. Um, your ads have been turned off. That's fine. We'll just go. Just close these down for now. So you'll see a little um, warnings and stuff like that that you can work through as you get time. So as you can see here, we've got page summary, the last seven days. We can go up to 28 days here within page level data. If we want to go back to the last three years, we can go export data. 
And when we click on this, we can go back to um, that pop-up probably won't show up for all of us because when we're sharing this, oh, no, it's called page data in Excel format or CSV. Um, you can actually select the date here. So even though you can go back to three years, four years, five years, you still can only export up to 180 days at a time. So you'll have to export 180 days, then the next 180 days, then the next 180 days. So that's how you'll need to do that. You've got page level data or down to, you can drill down to actual physical post data. So data with regards to actual engagement on your posts or video. So once you export that, it will actually download an Excel or CSV spreadsheet. And I'll show you what one of those look like a little bit later as well. There's quite a lot of data. So if you're an agency and you wanted to, you might have a client who wants you to report on something specific and they might want you to report back for the last five years, that's where you would export that data from there and then create your own graph or report based on the data that's in that spreadsheet. So in here, we've got things like we can see what, how the performance has gone over the last 28 days, which isn't a lot of data really when it's only the last 28 days. And that's really great for an overview. However, once we drill down here, this is where we start to see how individual posts are performing. And we'll go into that in a little bit more detail shortly. But here we've got pages to watch. And I find this a really, really useful tool here. So if you've got either competitors, direct competitors, it's a good idea to add them because you can have a look at how their engagement's going compared to yours. You might see that they've had a huge spike in engagement this week. And it might be because they're running a competition or they're doing a workshop. So it's a good way for you to sort of see, oh yeah, what's working for my competitors? What can I do differently? Um, to or what can I do to improve my engagement the other thing you can do is have a look at people who you really um, look up to or people who inspire you who are doing really well in the industry so that you can also have a look and they might not be a direct competitor because they might be based in the US and they might not be a competitor competitor because of that but you can also then keep tabs on what they're doing to help you keep your finger on the pulse in the industry to see what's trending, what people are doing, what's working for other businesses in your space. So what we might do now is add some competitors to watch. So we'll add some pages. Can you um, think of any, Pamela, that you might want to add to this? Um, yeah, maybe the doer's way. The, it's called the doer's way. Yep. That, one, yep. that one so we watch that page and we'll need another i think it's four yep okay um, <laughs> um kelly roach k-e-l-l-y udemy udemy can you spell that for me u-d-e-m-y they're on like online learning platforms so maybe i should be looking at those udemy free courses and those things you know that yeah that one the top one's fine Yep. education and then we'll do another one thinkific oh thinkific yeah but is that really it's not the right not the right thing to do well i mean thinkific is a platform uh can you type that for me sorry it's um not letting me type it it keeps kicking me out um thinkific's more of a lms but for multiple different topics whereas you're a specific industry okay then so what's your industry? People like Thinkific would not be your competitor. That one. Hey. Yeah. Um, that one. Yeah. So we just need to add two more. Oh, two more. Um, okay. Uh, Kelly Roach. Yep. And, and one more. Let's go big. Let's go Tony Robbins. Oh, yep. Why not? He's going to have huge, huge engagement. Uh, go De Destiny. I don't know which one that one is. That's more of an event, though, isn't it? Date with Destiny. Go Team Tony, Tony Robbins crew. Let's have a look at. Let's have a look at the town. Or should I do somebody different? I don't um, know. Any other, do you know any other personal development? <laughs> what if I typed in personal development? Would that bring me up, anybody? What's that now? Let's go to the top one, just, just to get that in there. Yep. And you can really give some good thought to that and research if you want as well. So yeah. we'll go done. And now you'll see that's going to add those guys down the bottom here. Courtney, have you used this? 
Um, no, I haven't. I was actually just going to ask, is there like a way that it automatically would suggest pages that you might want to watch or that are in your industry? Do you know what I mean? That's a good idea, Courtney. Um, I didn't know. <laughs> no, I think it, no, I think okay. I would just, if I were you, I'd probably mm. really do some research online just about mm. who those people might be, mm. who's really nailing it. You know, um, even you can do a Google search and say, have a look at even your SEO. So if you do a Google search and look mm. who ranks on the first page for keywords, so graphic designers sure. cans mm. or graphic designers, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, that could really help. Um, so here we can see Udemy. So Udemy I'm imagining is a um online platform is it yeah it's a learning platform so you get you course like a big, big. Mm. yeah so that there wouldn't really be your competitor so as you can see the engagement's like three million so that's going to be really it's not really you can't, can't compare yourself to that okay. but you can see here we've got live your um message with and it's 48.8 thousand um so what we could say is wow she's got some really great engagement she's definitely someone who i aspire to be you know similar to she's great what sort of content is she doing that is contributing to that large engagement rate? So we click on her business name there and we can see the sort of content she's putting up. Now, she's got 16 likes on this, five comments, five shares. That's a huge amount of engagement, 46,000 or whatever it is, considering that her top performing post only has 16 likes and five mm -hmm. comments. So yeah. that sort of tells me there could potentially be some paid advertising going on here, which is contributing to that large engagement rate. Right. So what I would then do is I would actually open up her page. Let's just go into that. And I would have a look to see if she's running any paid ads. So to do that, we're now on her page. We're going to scroll down to her page transparency here. And this is going to tell us if her business is running any ads. This page is currently running ads. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's have a look and see what sort of ad she's running, what wording, what she, what is the call to action that she's using? Because this could be something that could help you when you're developing your ads. So we'll have a look at her ads library now. And we can see she's running seven ads. So this, this is what she's doing. For, through this, you might find that she's actually running some sort of an online course or she's, so she's got an ad, which is running here. This is the wording. It's a video ad. And the call to action is to learn more. I'm guessing it's either going to direct us to her website where there's a landing page or it's going to ask us for our email information so that she can then add us to her database. So if we click on learn more, it's taken us to her website now, landing page, where we can get a free guide. And that free guide will actually then prompt us to give her our email information. So that's her strategy there. And that's why her engagement rate's up so high because she's running paid ads. So it doesn't mean that her content is highly engaging, even though it says that she's got high engagement. You know what I mean? So what would she typically, uh, you may not be able to answer it, but be spending on ads then? It's very difficult to say. You can't, yeah. So it, I spend $50 a day. Is that like, that's like peanuts or not really enough, Pam? Or is it like, no, that's a good amount or what is it? Um, it depends on, so really with, okay, so with, with ads, and this is where I think you need to attend one of the ad sessions just so we can get through the content of this today. Yeah. But with ads, it's... The, the, obviously, you can spend as little or as much as you like. The most important thing with Facebook ads is that you are retargeting people because that way you're really hitting the people who are likely to purchase your pro product. Otherwise, you're just chucking it out there in the hope that someone who might be interested might buy. Yeah. Yeah, so people, you know, even, yeah, some people just don't really understand how to do the ads properly with the retargeting and that's where the gold is. Yeah. And it takes a lot of time. So what we could do is when you're, when you attend a Facebook ad session, you can actually start doing, setting up some ads and putting in budgets without spending yet. And they'll give you an estimated results. So you can get an idea of what kind of money you need to spend for an expected outcome. So you might say when you're doing an ad, I need to get 
250 leads. And then Facebook says, oh, okay, well, for 250 leads for the lifetime of this ad, you're going to have to spend $10,000. Or you might say, my budget is 250 bucks for this ad. That's all I've got. And Facebook says, okay, well, for 250 bucks, we estimate you're going to get this many leads. So you can then look at that and go, oh, it's not as much many as I thought, which means then you might need to reconsider your targeting and fine tune that. And you're really going to have to work on the copy of your ad and the video because that will affect the results. Um, and then, so you're going to be with $250 budget, very careful that you're making your ad appeal to the target market that you're targeting and that your targeting's on point as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of um, until you test it out, it's going to be very hard for you to know what sort of results or spend you're going to need. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So with that, so that's something to really keep an eye on in there. It's one of my favorite places to look, especially when you're not doing a lot of paid ads and when you're also researching whether or not you will pay ad ads and what do paid ads and what your competitors are doing. The other area to have a look at is, are you on a Mac? Yeah. Oh, okay. So just going to see if that, is going to help us. Can you increase the size of your screen by pressing command and the plus symbol? Thank you. Just a little bit. Yep, that's a bit good. More? That's good. I'm sorry. No, no, that's all good. So here we've got your five most recent posts here. So when we look at the five most recent posts, just a second, yep. Up the top, we've got, you know, organic reach, post clicks, reactions, comments, and shares. So these are, so does everyone here know what reach is? I'll explain it. I'll just go through and describe them. So reach is how many timelines your post has reached. Then you've got um, impressions. So impressions is how many times your post has reached a timeline. So you might have five people, your, your post has reached five different people's timelines. However, three of those people have seen your post in their timeline four times. So impressions will always be, that's an impression. Impressions are always going to be higher than reach. Where does it say impression? Sorry. Yeah, it's not here just yet. I'll show you in a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. So impressions means yeah, like one person might see your post multiple times in their timeline. So they're always going to be higher. Then you've got post clicks. So post clicks is also known as engagement. So engagement includes anyone who clicks on a post, reacts, comments, or shares. That's engagement rate. And so for me, when it comes to posting to my socials, engagement rate is the number one, um, I guess, analytic that I want to measure because I could reach a million people and only two people engage. If I find that my engagement rate is really low, it's generally because my um, content is not appealing to my audience. So that means that I might have to look at trying to change my strategy, times that I'm posting, but also am I being too salesy? Am I following the 80-20 rule, which is 80% fun, interesting content that's going to engage people and only a 20% sale of my product? And so we really want to aim for the average engagement rate on Facebook is around one to two percent so it's quite low now that takes into account all pages so that's all pages and industries every industry is going to be slightly different um, a great engagement rate if you can set yourself a benchmark would be if you can aim to have a six percent engagement rate on all posts that's good so to know what sort of engagement rate you're currently getting you can click on see all posts here when we click on that, that's going to drop down now and show us a lot, all of the posts. And you can go back as long as far as you like. But when we click on see all posts, it allows us to click on these little drop downs here, which then we can drill down into different kind of results. So we can have a look at all of our posts. We can now have a look at our impressions. So how many people have we impressed? So we'll see that that will go up generally in our reach section here. So it looks like we're not really reaching people multiple times. So that means our impressions are not higher. Yeah. So let's have a look at our reach for, yeah. So people aren't really seeing this content more than once in their timelines. 
once you start doing boosted posts or ads, then that will generally go higher. I'm just going to go down and see if you've got any paid content down here. Um, this all looks organic. So you haven't done any paid ads for quite a while or any boosts, I should say. I haven't done any boosts. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know whether to, what, what that yeah. even means really. It's like, what does that yeah. mean? Cost yeah. money or what is it? Yeah. So, um, and that's again, we'll look at that in a paid session. So an ad session. So I think um, I'll send you some info on my next sessions, which are about Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. So start living your life here. We can see this post got an incredible reach and, and good engagement, but this one here got incredible engagement, but less reach. So what was it about this one? that got so many people engaged. We go to the very top. We can have a look at what that engagement rate is. So to have a look at our actual percentage engagement rate, we're going to drop this down here. And we're going to look at engagement rate. So that's going to give us a percentage. So it's very easy to get a higher engagement rate when you're only reaching six people. So we want to look at for a better idea of true performance. Let's go down and see what the engagement rate here was. So a 16%. Sorry, is it is it a percentage of your audience or like what's what is the percentage? Percentage of people who've been reached. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. A 16% engagement rate is really good. So um your we want to now try and aim to get a higher reach now for this because here we've got you reached 1.5 thousand people, but only a 2% engagement rate. So while that reached a lot of people, performed well for that reason. Maybe think about why it reached so many people, but why out of 1,500 people did only 2% actually engage, comment, like, share, or click? So um, we might need to have a look at how do we reach that many people? There was a lot of shares. So I would say that because people shared it, did you ask people to share it? No, you know what? That might be me. I shared it to a ton of different groups. There you go. So your reach is huge. So that's fantastic but people were not really interested. So how do we actually make it either a more appealing offer? Yeah. Um, usually less text on an image is a better idea too because text is a bit too salesy. Um, yeah. But this here, so 241 reach with a really great engagement rate. So what was this one that made people engage? It's a video for a start. Yeah. And how do we repeat that but reaching more people? So... Yeah, you had an average video watch time of two minutes and three seconds, which is really, really good. Um, what just happened there? Oh, I you, think that was me. I was moving you out of the way so I could see what oh, you were Oh, okay, about. no worries. Yeah. And so Did then... No, no, it's all good. You. Yep, so then, so as you can see, so that's where you really want to drill down further, especially yeah. when you're doing organic posting and not paying for paid boosts or ads. So it's really important to look at that. When you're doing paid ads, it's important to look at your competitors, look at their page transparency, what sort of ads they're running yeah. to get a feel for what else other people are doing in the industry. So spend some time in here looking at that. The other place to look within your page analytics is, and then we'll move on to the next section after this, um, we can do more in-depth workshops. If you guys have anything that you want to know more about, make sure you email me and I can develop a workshop to work to suit you guys. But in here, we've got um, time for the question, um, Renee. And I, maybe yeah. you might be interested in this too. It's like, could you help us like actually create better ads so that we can yeah. sit and see the difference? Tell us Definitely. how to like word it and how to put it and, and yeah. stuff like that. Yep, I can do that. So um, absolutely. So I think it's definitely worth registering for my ad um, workshops that are coming up. Can we just uh, in there with you or do we have to do something else? Oh, I'll have to email you at the end. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll send you some emails. And so with that, so we've got um, here, see there's different days of the week here. When you're doing organic posting, we really want to make sure we try and reach as many people as possible. So this is in Pacific time zone. That's, so you've got to figure out what this is in your own time zone. There's actually, um, there's translators online. So if you look up Pacific time zone to what your time zone is, it'll help you work out when to post for your time. But as you can see, on average over the whole week, the best time is 11 p.m. Pacific time zone. I think it's about a 17-hour time difference. So you've got to try and figure that out. So yeah. what is 11 p.m. in your time zone? Um, so that 
there on on average is that that's going to be the best time of the day for you to post. So I'd always then schedule if you're scheduling content for five minutes before that time so that you're reaching the most amount of people as possible and you're fresh in their timeline. The other thing is you can actually have a look on a Sunday. Oh, Sunday's um, remarkably different. So that's actually at 3 4 p.m. on a Sunday that is the best time, Pacific time zone, for you to post. On a Monday is different again. So when you start looking at this and you go, okay, so if you're going to schedule content for the week, just make sure that you're scheduling at five minutes before that peak time on that day to reach the most amount of people. So from here, there are other ways that we can have a look at our analytical data. And so I'm just going to briefly go into those now, just so that, and obviously down the left-hand side here, you can have a look at, you know, different sort of analytical data, but we want to go into now your business suite. So let's go into business.facebook.com. And this is where you can view You'll find your favorite place, but if you're only looking after like one business page, I would look at your page level data. At, that would be my preferred place. In business suite, business.facebook.com, down the left-hand side here, we've got insights. So if we click on insights here, this will give us, if you're managing multiple pages, you'll need to drop down and go into the page that you're wanting to look at the data for. And the data in here is going to be slightly different and presented slightly differently. So you've got page reach for Facebook or Instagram reach. So you can see that it's giving you both Insta and Facebook here. Um, results, so page reach, Instagram reach. So it's kind of higher level stuff. Content, so you can actually go down into individual pieces of content. So do you both know what organic versus paid is? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so paid is when you actually either pay for a boost or an ad. Mm. Organic means that content that you've had no paid component go towards at all. Um, yeah, so you'll find sometimes when people do paid, um, they boost, they might get an incredible reach. That's like, oh, wow, we reached, you know, 10,000 people with this video, but still their engagement's no good. And that means that you're going to have to really rework your content to appeal to people to make them want to click. So the more people we get engaging, the way that Facebook algorithm and Instagram algorithm works is it says um, these people are interested in the content that this page has to deliver because they're engaging in it. So the next time this page posts, we're going to make sure that this content lands in their newsfeed. Plus, we're going to try and find other profiles that are similar to that person's profile and also deliver this content into their profiles. So if I'm understanding that correctly then, sorry to yeah. interrupt you, no, you're right. from what I've seen, my my going live, because the Sunday was the day that I, I was trying to go live every Sunday, but then I forget, <laughs> I get busy and I forget. But so it looks from here and that, uh, that reach is 241 for this, because that's the only live one on that thing there, that I've had like 83 likes and reactions, 61 people commented, six people shared it, which in their link clicks wherever i don't even know what that means but 59 so that's like obviously the biggest one on all of them so it seems to me that my lives are much more beneficial mm. than the just the static post would that be am i reading that rightly that's right yep looking at this data and that could change over time you know yeah. that people might start to get sick of seeing them so then you might want to change <laughs> something up, which happens you know to, like, yeah, that would be a personal thing yeah and so then you might want to just change up the content but you might also go okay well i'm not going to do it every single week because that can be a little bit dull and predictable but sometimes predictable needs to happen for live because people will be waiting to join you for that session yeah. so you got to think about am i going to make this a regular thing every single Sunday at this time, maybe look at your um, times of the day and see which day has the most users online at what time and go live at that time so that you're reaching, because it's quite a bit of effort with lives. Um, mm -hmm. You might even start doing a post once a week and boosting the post that says, see, meet me every single Sunday at this time for live and ask your questions and I will answer them live for you. Okay. Yeah, so then people know, oh, I'm going to be there at that time because she's given us free tips and advice. And then that might be a, some sort of a funnel into your paid program. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
No worries. Okay, so that's that's another place so you can look at your audiences in here as well, obviously. So you can start looking at your current audience and here they're saying, but you're, you've got a current audience on Facebook of 348, but you've got a potential audience of 17 million four hundred thousand. <laughs> but that's a few of those. That'd be nice there, Renee. <laughs> yeah, but that's obviously now this is their way of going if you pay to reach a bigger audience, but you've got a you know a potential yeah. in Sydney and Melbourne and yeah. So um, you can sort of do a little bit of research there. That might help towards your paid ads as well. The other thing we want to have a look at is um, groups. So do you own and manage any groups Yeah. yourself? So let's go into our group. Have you looked at the insights in your group? No. Okay. <laughs> That's a rhetorical <laughs> question, Renee. Oh, no. <laughs> Let me try. I can do this bit. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. All right, so reset your life group. We'll just try that one. Yep, great. So here we've got a group. So obviously all of this data together helps you with your strategy, both organic and paid strategy. It's really, it's all about just researching better ways of doing things. And so down here, if we go down to your, can't actually quite drive at the moment. Here we go um growth so insight so here they've drilled down growth engagement participate participation type so let's have a look at your growth your group growth and here we can see everyone last 28 days can go up to 60 days and have a look at so 87 people have posted and commented on this particular day there were four pieces of activity posted or commented what happened on that day sometimes i'll go back and i'll look at what happened is it that people like to post on a monday are we doing a monday posting you know encouraging people to post about themselves on a monday who knows um views so there was the most number of views over here on on this date the 23rd of september what was that piece of content um it's going to go down here is that the bottom where i am yep then we've got Engagement. So obviously, like I said, engagement for me is the most important metric that I like to measure because that's people who are engaging in your content. So whatever's happened here, there's been quite a large chunk of posts. Popular days. So Wednesday's your popular days and shows us the popular times of the day. So it makes sense, you know, in the so morning. Australian time or Pacific time still? This one should be in the actual your time zone. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and so then you can get, so just spend some time looking through here and you can get a really good idea. Here we go, top contributors. So you can have a look to see who's posting the most, what sort of content they're posting. Um, it might even be worth doing some polls in your group to ask people, you know, what they're looking for. Are you giving them what they want? Is there something that you can do to help the, the group engage more? Um, and when you see what day people are more likely to engage, it might also help you work out they're the better days to post, or it might be better for you to start posting at 7 a.m. in the morning before everyone starts work because that's the time of the day they're most active in the group. Yeah, yeah. and uh, mentorship. So these this data here is probably oh I guess you're trying to you're doing like an online learning system, so this might be worth looking at. So you don't have any guides at the moment. I'm So I'm a trainer for the Diploma of Social Media Marketing and I've got a closed group for my students and yeah. I use guides for things like Module 1, um, Tips for Assessment Task 1, and so I'll have a guide per module. That's what with, those ones are. Those worksheets are all guides. Oh, okay, sorry. They are guides. I wasn't. So what's going on here? Total completed. Oh, okay, you haven't got any completed, post completed. All right, cool. Are people working through those guides? They probably took them off for, that was a free five-day reset your life. Oh, right. And they probably downloaded them off of there. That, so it wasn't about engagement on there. Should I have done it on the on the uh, group? Or? No, no, that, that's, it might be better for people. I guess at the end of the day, what would be better for you and your business is to get this stuff happening on your website, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's how we have a look at um, data within groups. And now we're going to jump into Facebook ads. So facebook.com forward slash. Actually, um, Courtney, did you want to look in your ads platform or? Um, yeah, I can do it for one of my clients. If... Yeah. Oh, actually, we're going to be sharing this data. So 
it might oh, be okay no i don't yeah i was, i could do it like fast but if we're going to post the video i probably can't um yeah, yeah sorry <laughs> maybe you. Want oh, to that's me. okay i thought yeah i better check yeah mm, thanks so if we go into facebook.com forward slash ads manager and this is something that we'll look into in more detail obviously when we start doing facebook ads um So in Ads Manager here, we've got a personal ad account and we've got a, that's a business ad account that's been created here by the looks. We yeah. want to avoid at all costs running ads on our personal ad accounts for business purposes. So, and this is something we'll go into more detail in if you join one of the ad sessions. But the reason being is that if you have a business and you want to sell it in five years time, you can't hand over your ad account the data, the audiences you've collected, all of that sort of stuff to the new purchaser. You can't detach it from you as a person. So that's a really, really valuable asset for any business with the sale of a business. So what the, the right practice would be to make sure that you've got a business ad account created at least for every business that you run. So we'll have a look at this and see if there's any ads run on this business ad account. Um, but it doesn't. So what was the girl running for? I got her from Fiverr and she she was the one I was paying. I'm not sure what she was running your ads on. So um, let's have a look and see on Maximum. So maybe she was running it on this one. She's created it, but it hasn't got an ad name. So when you do the, um, when you attend the ad session, I think that will really help you. Yeah. So um, as we can see here, so there's lots of different ways that you can look at the analytical data with your ad accounts. We can actually just simply go into view charts here for this, this campaign, and it will give us a performance overview. This is quite limited. So we can have a look at the demographics. We can have a look at, you know, the platform that they were on, um, which is fine. It shows us that most of your users are coming from Facebook here. Um, you can have a look at mobile versus desktop. So it's kind of high level stuff that is interesting, but probably not really anything that's super, super helpful. But what we can actually do is we can drill down into, so here we can see the results. Um, uh, we can see the reach, we can see the impressions. It looks to me like um, it may have been conversions that you were trying to, yeah, there, this, not a lot of results on this one, which is fine. Um, this is something we can work on. But see down on the right-hand side here, Courtney, this will be really helpful for you with your clients. Hmm. You can actually click down. And you can actually go into uh, creating a custom report in here. Mm. And let's have a look at this. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Creating a custom report. And this will actually put things, the data for a particular ad or an ad account into graphs and stuff like oh. that. Yeah. Um, I find one of the most useful tools or the useful pieces of information with an ad is more about the cost per result because mm. you know people say oh wow look at the reach on this and it's like well that's fantastic but what results did we get from that mm. so when you're thinking about a campaign you've got an objective of either you know conversions so physical sales or in-store traffic or it could be leads or it could be um you know, ad recall lift, like there's all sorts of things like this. And you sort of think, okay, what did it cost me for, for each lead? What did it cost me for each conversion? So that's something I think is really important to um, deliver to a client. Um, so let's scroll, scroll yeah. down. Yeah. So they're saying these are popular breakdowns campaign name. Let's just go down into, I'm just going to do this briefly. Um, metrics. Yep, 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 yep. Do you do this sort of stuff already, Courtney, for your clients? Do you, do you... Yeah, like run ads um, similar to this. Yeah, I haven't exported like a report before. Um, I usually just screenshot from the other area. Yeah. And then, yeah, I think yeah. this will be um, really helpful for you, Courtney. Mm, yeah, super time saving as well. 
Yeah, definitely. Because um, if you're anything like me, I used to put my own reports together. Yeah, same. I'm thinking I might have to actually do a session because we're like on this specifically. Mm. Uh, would you be interested in that, Courtney? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. Well, I might develop one which is about putting reports together specifically for Facebook ads for your clients. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Because it's probably not something that everyone here is going to need for this session. Mm, yeah, um, no worries. Yeah, yeah. And that way we can go into some really great detail. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so we'll go close that. And so I spent quite a bit of money there for nothing really then. <laughs> well, um, I think it's very hard. I, we'll, we'll need to really go back to what is your objective. And I think sometimes that's the thing that, like if it's brand awareness and you reach 30,000 people, well, you're not really looking for any closed business from that. Yeah. But traffic to website that's another result we can clearly measure because it's like, well, how many people clicked on a link? And so we can actually work out what it cost us per click. And then we can start comparing that to future ads and seeing which ones are performing better. But I think maybe with this, we need to really clearly outline what objectives you want to achieve and breaking them down into like what's called a funnel. That's another workshop that's coming up. So identifying your funnel. So what sort of ad are we having to drive as much awareness and traffic to your website? What sort of ad are we um, running to try and get people to consider your product, which is about um, maybe clicking through to your website? And what sort of ad are we running to get people to decide and make a physical purchase? So it's like pushing people down into a funnel. Um, and it takes a bit of planning to do that. And I reckon it maybe just looks like that plan hasn't happened. So if I'm working with someone like Courtney, um, Courtney, I'm not sure how you run your thing, but if I'm working with someone like Courtney, what's my expectation of Courtney driving that? Or, or do I have to just, what, what, you know, what is that partnership supposed to be like? like so, uh, you know? Yeah. So um, that there would be some, and I guess it really, it comes down to also researching your um, consultants that you're employing. Yeah. Um, and also you don't know what to research if you're not aware of what they should be doing. Yeah. And so hopefully by maybe attending the, the ad sessions, it, you can sort of have a bit more awareness of what a campaign looks like, what you can expect from um, a consultant. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, it's going to be easier for you to research who you want to employ to do that because there are consultants out there who will do ads like this, which is, um, but not, but there'll pe be people who specialize in funnels and ads and results. Yeah. They, you know, and there's people who specialize in just creating posts. So creating content, organic content. So perhaps they're better at creating organic content. And sometimes they do a boost or a small ad, which isn't really converting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my, yeah. my question then is like for people like me to be successful and people like Courtney to be successful, because we're on different ends of the scale. Courtney's the one that's doing these things. And I'm the one that's wanting someone to do those things. How does she get the best for her clients and niche down into like, rather than being lukewarm and just having a go here dabbling. And then how does she be the best person for them? And how do I give, how do are I, we, dial are we talking about ads, ads at the moment? Yeah. So this isn't an ad session. So people, I've got to make sure I stay on to, on topic. Oh, of course, okay. yeah. So I was just looking at the analytics. So because something like going into yeah Facebook ads is quite complex and in depth. Yeah. So we've allocated two hour sessions for that. So I want you guys to attend those so that you can really get all of the information you need. But because we're recording this session, people are watching it back later. They're thinking they're watching an analytical. Yeah. Session. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So no, that's okay. I know it's really. Honestly, like you'll find Facebook ads so amazing. What's what is actually possible with those? So, um, I'll I'll send through the links, uh, the workshops, so you can register, or I'll just get you registered for them. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, do you want you want that too? Hey, Courtney. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'll yeah. Okay. So what I might do here is because we can't actually look at the data I'm just trying to think for the results because there's not really a lot of results here to look at. Um, I might actually try and have a look, Pamela, just quickly before we finish up, your um, 
personal ad account to see if maybe there's um, better results on there that we can have a look at just for the purpose of, okay. Da, da, da. So we're going to drop that down and see this one here because I noticed that there was a bit more happening mm -hmm. here for ads earlier. Here we go. So we're looking at the maximum. So see across the top here, this is where you can have a look briefly at the data. So you've got results, reach, impression, cost per result. So here you can see you've spent $97 um, and your cost per result. So it's people reached, you're trying to reach people and it's costing you $13 per 100,000 people. Here, you're looking for post engagements and it's costing you 0.004 per post engagement. Um, now, what you can actually do here is you can add in um, analytical data that you want to look at. So let's say um, you want to have a look at performance and clicks, right? So once we click on that, that is adding in data that you can look at as well. So you can add things that you want to measure within. So if I might go, I want to look at app engagement. So that then will give me data with regards to engagement. So see how you can add things to look at through clicking those little. Yeah. Yep. You can customize the columns here as well. So if you click on customize columns, you can start adding, removing data that's important to you to measure for those ads if you want to view it in here. Mm -hmm. So is there any um, definitions that you guys aren't sure of with regards to analytical data? Courtney um, might know stuff. <laughs> I have like a, a bit of an issue with um, one of the ads that we did where the it was a video and the views and the reach, like the views were lower somehow. And we were confused about like what that, I don't know. I don't know if it's just like that the data is glitchy or it's slow. So it's like not loaded as accurate, but we yeah. were just like, how is one lower than the other when they're the same thing? We were well, like, is not. it wrong? Or like, I don't know. <laughs> so like yeah, the data is okay. Yeah. They're not the same thing. So right. Rick is, um, so you could reach 100,000 people's timelines. Right. So if you have a, a video that goes into your timeline, you might just scroll mm. straight past and not view that video. Right. So it's only yeah. if you watch for like a little bit of time or something. Yeah, that that's like right. That. So yeah. you can also measure with um, videos, you can mm. also measure three-second views. How many three-second yeah. How many? Yeah. And so the other thing you can also do just to think about is let's say you do a video and you've had um, – you want to, you've done a video for brand awareness. Mm. Now you want to know how many out of those 100,000 people have watched at least three seconds of that video. Mm. Well, actually, if they've only watched at least three seconds, they're probably not interested because mm. they haven't stayed on to watch more. Yeah. So then you might go, I want to find anyone who's watched at least um, 30 seconds or one minute or whatever the data is, I can't quite remember. Yeah. And I want those, I want to send another ad, which is a 20% discount of this program to anyone who has watched this video for at least one minute, because I know that they've stayed on long enough. You know, so when you go through to create your next ad, that's an option. Yeah. So you can do that through ad creation. Oh. So again, these are all things that we'll look at. So what I've done with my, yeah. um, so what I might just do is once we've wrapped this up, I'll go into just the next workshops, just so you know what they're about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we've got reach. So how many timelines we reach organic. That's when we do content, which is not paid. We don't boost it. We don't do ads. We've got paid, which is when we do a boost or we run an actual physical ad. The difference between a boost and an ad is a boost is a post that's on our page that we go, mm, it hasn't performed really well. I want more people to see it. So you boost it. If that post is really engaging, people might comment, like, and share or click, and that's an engagement. Or you might boost it. It might reach more people that wouldn't have otherwise seen it, but they still might not engage. They might just go, this content's 
boring, you know, so they're not going to engage. Then you've got um, likes, obviously people who like your page or like a post. Just someone who likes your page doesn't mean they follow your page. So people who follow your page, they choose to see your content on the top of their feeds. Like they want to see your content. Mm. Um, Viral reach is basically the number of people who see a a page post through a story or something shared by a friend. You've got unique user. So someone who has visited your page within a specified time. Negative feedback. So that's more things like anyone who has unfollowed your paid page who have, um, you know, hidden one of your posts or hidden all posts that are done by you uh, or reported you for spam. So you can actually have a look at who any negative feedback. You know, when we looked at the top five posts and you say see all and then drop down and then you get the option to drill down into different content in there, you can actually have a look at negative feedback and see if any of the posts that you've done have received negative feedback. If you find that you've been reported for spam like two or three times on a post, you could be like, oh, God, I better not do that sort of content again because people are not liking that. Or you might find that people have hidden content because they're sick of seeing it. So you might be posting too frequently and annoying your followers. Um, But you really want to avoid reports of spam and unfollowing your page. So it's good to keep an eye on that. Um, Yeah, so if you want a more in-depth understanding of um definitions then where you can actually go to do that is and i want to share this with you um remember i spoke about downloading data at a page or a post level do you remember that yeah so you're in the back of your page insights you extract raw data up to 180 days at a time and then that is um Give it given to you in the downloaded in the form of a Excel spreadsheet or a CSV document. And I'm just going to get open one up for you now. So I actually downloaded one already just to show you. So once you've downloaded it, this one here's got no data, but I'm going to show you. Let me share. When you download your document, you'll have all sorts of data down here, figures, percentages, numbers. Mm. When you go to the right, we can have a look at here. Every one, every one of these are a uh, metric. So lifetime post paid reach. Below that is giving you the definition of that metric. So lifetime, the number of people who had your pages post enter their screen throughout paid distribution such as an ad so so there you go that's where you can get more in-depth understanding of the definitions of those facebook analytics yeah awesome yeah so with that um an hour is such a short amount of time to go through everything at a, at a in-depth level but um that's just sort of like a brief overview where you can find different data how you can use that maybe to research your competitors um and like i said we've got the ad workshops coming up so i'm going to just stop our recording now so we can talk about those ad workshops